Hey everyone, this is Joel at Hamina. Welcome to this Hamina quick start tutorial. In this video, I'm gonna show you the basics of how to use Hamina as quickly as possible. So let's jump right in. So the first thing I'm, that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the project dropdown and I'm gonna click create new project. And then we'll give our project a name. I'm gonna call this one hospital and we'll change the environment type to hospital as well and then we'll click save and now we can upload a floor plan. Now this floor plan could be a PNG or a JPEG or maybe even a PDF or a CAD file like a DXF or DWG. We support all kinds of different file formats and so take a look at the, the list of what we support and see if your format is supported, it most likely is. Great, so here we go, here's our floor plan. And uh, the, the first thing that we need to do with this floor plan is we need to set the scale. But before we do that, I wanna teach you a little bit about how to pan and zoom in Hamina. It's really important to be able to zoom up close on things and zoom out and zoom back in on different areas really quickly and really efficiently. You'll do a lot of that when you're doing network design. So we'll just take a second to talk about that. Okay, so my favorite way to zoom in and out is to use the trackpad on my laptop. This will work great on both Windows and Mac OS, I'm, I'm obviously on a Mac here, but basically you're just gonna pinch and zoom just like on your smartphone. So we can pinch and zoom. We can of course two finger pan around, so we could pan around. We can pinch to zoom back out and that works great. Now if you're using a traditional mouse, like I've got my Logitech mouse here, uh, or if you're using something like a Magic Mouse, uh, then there's a couple of other controls that are good to know about as well. First off, you can right click and drag to pan around. That's a great way to move around. You can also pan with the middle mouse button as well. Hold down the middle mouse button and pan around. Uh, you can also zoom in and out by holding down the command key and rolling your scroll wheel forward and backwards. So I'm holding down the command key right now and moving my scroll wheel forward and backwards on Windows. That is the control key. So that's another way to zoom in and out using your scroll wheel. Uh, finally, you can also pan around by holding down the space bar. So I'm just gonna hold down the space bar and just move my mouse around. And now you can see uh, the map panning. I can kind of skateboard a little bit by pressing the space bar and moving my mouse. And that works really well. You'll see me doing that in Hamina all the time. Now, if you want some more details about how else you can pan and zoom, you can find all the details on our documentation over in the panning and zooming map section. So go check that out if you want some more details about how to manipulate the map. So great, now with that done, let's go ahead and set the scale. So to set the scale, I've actually got a scale built in here, which is really convenient. I'm gonna use that. So we'll grab the scale tool and then we'll click on the zero and click on the 10 meter mark here and I'll type in 10 and click set. And there we go, now the scale is set. Now, if you don't have a scale marker on your map, um, another great way to do that is to go measure the length of a hallway. Like for example, this hallway here is uh, about 28 meters long. Of course, you can click right here on where it says meters and you can switch that over to feet if you want and you can switch back and forth whenever you want. Uh, if you don't have a way to measure the length of a hallway or large room, another place you can go is you can go look at Google Earth and get a measurement from there and you can find all the details about how to do that in our documentation right here. So great, so now that we've got the scale set, the next thing that we need to do is to draw some walls. So to do that, I'm gonna go visit the draw walls tool and then we're just gonna select a material type from the list of materials. Now, these are just the ones that we include by default. You can add your own, you can customize these, you can change the colors, how much attenuation they have. Everything is completely editable here, so feel free to do that. So now, let's go ahead and draw in a few walls. So to do that, I'm gonna zoom in nice and close here, and I'm just going to left click to start drawing walls. So I'm not clicking and dragging, I just did a simple left click to start drawing the wall, and then we'll pan up here a little bit. I'm using the space bar to pan right now. And then we'll left click again to place another segment, left click again to place another segment, left click, left click, and then we'll left click right here. And now I'm ready to be done drawing walls. So to stop drawing walls, I'm gonna right click. So, oh, I guess we'll try again, there we go. So left click, left click, left click, right click to stop. That's the, the pattern that you use. So let's go ahead and do it again. So let's switch over to concrete and we'll do around this stairwell in concrete. So left click, 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 right click to stop. You can also change the profile by pressing hotkeys. So notice that there's all these little hotkeys next to these. So if we wanna to switch to the heavy drywall, I can just press H on my keyboard and now we've switched over to that. Left click, 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 
right click to stop. So you can see how a map like this, we can knock this whole thing out in like 10, 15 minutes tops. It can go really fast. But there's another way you can draw walls as well. Uh, in addition to manually drawing walls, if you have a CAD file like a DXF or a DWG or a PDF that was produced from a CAD tool like this one, then you can, in most cases, have Hamina draw the walls in for you automatically. So here's how to do that. We'll go back to the Draw Walls tool and I'll click on Auto Draw Walls. And then we're going to select different layers of the PDF or the CAD file and assign a material to those layers. So we can do that by mousing over the layers on the map. So for example, I can find all of the interior walls. So I'm just hovering over those right now. So we'll click on that, it turns blue. You can see these are our non-structural walls. So I'll click on the heavy drywall to assign that to that layer. Then we can go click on all the windows and we'll say that that is an exterior window. And then we can go click on all of the structural walls. That's uh, not quite the one I was looking at, looking for. So let's go find it in the list here. So here we go, there's our structural wall, so I'll select that one. And then we'll say that that's all a brick wall. So there we go, we've assigned our materials to our layers. Oh, let's get the doors too, we gotta get the doors as well. So we'll say that's solid wood, and then now we'll hit import, and Hamina is gonna go through and draw all those walls in for us automatically. Now again, the requirements to do this are either a DXF or DWG CAD file, or a PDF that was produced from a CAD file so it has uh, so, or from a CAD tool rather, so it has all of the different materials in separate layers, that's really important. And we also just need it to be a good clean CAD file that has the right layers, they're split out in the right way, and if we have all of those different things, then Hamina can draw all the walls in for us automatically. But instead of using that, I'm gonna switch to another project file that I've already drawn the walls in for. So here we go, we've got a, a, a nice clean file here with everything drawn in, and it's ready to place access points on it. So let's do that now. So I'm gonna click on the access point tool that's gonna bring up the add access point pane over here on the right. And then from here, we can select which make and model we want to use. Now there's tons of different vendors that are in here. You know, everything, uh, everything you can imagine, Arachnus, Arista, Cisco's in here, Extreme, uh, Juniper, Meraki, Microtik, Nile, Ruckus, uh, Ubiquity, all, the, all the, the common AP vendors are all in here. If anything is missing, let us know. We're happy to get access points added for you. So let's go with a Juniper. Uh, maybe we'll go with like, uh, let's go with a, with a Juniper AP33. It's just kind of a, a good uh, sort of medium cost AP. So we'll go with that for, for starters. And you can see here that I've got my height set to two and a half meters. There's some other things that we can set here, uh, such as the transmit power. But for now, we'll leave all of that alone and we'll just go ahead and start placing some APs. So right now, I have got a heat map turned on. We're looking at Wi-Fi coverage in the five gigahertz band. That's what I'm currently visualizing right now. So let's zoom in a little bit and let's place an AP. So there we go. Just click on the map to place an AP and then we can go place additional APs. We'll just kind of run around the building here and, uh, and, and place in a bunch of access points. You can see this is kind of the fun part. Uh, this is the part where all that wall drawing and, and setting the scale and sort of all the preparations sort of pays off. Uh, it's kind of like when you finally get to paint a wall after you have masked it all off and done all that. So there we go. We've placed some APs in here. And uh, of course, anything that's green, if you look down here in the legend, you can see anything that's green is negative 65 dBm or better. So we've got a, a few areas that we don't quite have good enough coverage, but that looks pretty good for kind of a first look at it. So then from here, what I like to do is I like to go take a look at secondary coverage. So secondary coverage tells us whether we have two or more access points covering that spot. It basically helps us make sure that we have good enough cell overlap for things like good roaming performance, and it also helps us uh, make sure that we have redundancy. If we lose an AP for some reason, we have redundancy. There's another access point covering that area. So for example, you can see over in this corner, since we're looking at secondary coverage right here, we actually don't have good secondary coverage in this room. If we go back and look at primary coverage, that's coverage from one or more access point access points. It looks great, but we don't have good secondary coverage there. So let's improve our secondary coverage a little bit here by just adding a few more access points. So we'll go click on the access point tool again and just go through and start placing a few in here. Maybe we'll put one right here and nudge this one back over into the corner. That looks a lot better. Grab our access point tool again and I'm just going to kind of almost not quite double up how many access points I have. Whoops, I placed one outside there so we'll just bring it in really quick. That looks pretty good. I'm gonna do one more right here to kind of fill in that spot. One more right here to fill in that spot. And that looks pretty good, pretty good. I, I like how that looks. 
Now, one thing that you may have noticed is that I'm not actually showing you the coverage outside the building right now. That's because I have already placed a scope zone around this building. So with a scope zone, you can basically mark things as being in or out of scope. And I have, let's hide our walls really quick just so we can see it. I have drawn a zone around this whole thing. And if I right click on the edge of it, I can bring up this little toolbar. It is marked as an in scope zone. So everything that is inside this zone is considered within the scope of the project. So if I delete the scope zone, now you can see how the signal strength is kind of spilling out, uh, out to the outside of the building. And it looks really, really cool. It looks great, but it can be a little bit distracting and kind of make the design look a little bit worse than it really is. You can see all these areas with no coverage. They're outside of the scope of the project, so we don't want to worry about that. So I'm actually going to hit the undo button to bring that scope zone back. And I also want to take the stairway out of scope of our project. That's, that's not within scope. It's uh, concrete walls. If we turn our walls back on, you can see they're green, which means they're concrete here. So let's just take it out of scope. So we'll go to the in slash out of scope zone and I'll just go left click, left click, left click. This is just like drawing walls. Left click, left click, left click, and then right click to stop. And now we can see that that is out of scope. We marked it automatically based on the size. This must be an out of scope zone. So now it doesn't show up as an area with poor signal strength. It just shows up as not being in scope. And you can do, uh, you can mark some other rooms as well, like you know a shower. Nobody's going to want to use Wi-Fi in the shower room here. So we'll just do another scope zone, and we'll just click and drag to make a square. And there we go. There's another out of scope zone. So that's now marked as out of scope for the project. So great, that looks pretty good. Uh, so we've got our uh, primary coverage planned out. We've got our secondary coverage. Of course, we can look at 2.4 gigahertz if we want to. You can plan in six gigahertz if you'd like to as well. I didn't choose an AP with six gigahertz support, but it's there. So that all looks pretty good. There's some other heat maps we can look at like the signal to noise ratio and the data rate and the interference that's all available there. But we'll just stick with primary and secondary coverage for now. So now what I'd like to do is let's do a little bit of switch planning really quickly. So I'm actually going to hide the walls really quick and I'm going to hide the access point channels and numbers just to get those out of the way. Just kind of cleans up the map a little bit. Oh, and we'll hide our, uh, we'll hide our in and out of scope zones as well. So that looks, looks all nice and clean. So uh, yeah, let's place some switches in the design really quick. So I'll go to the network infrastructure tool and that opens up the add network infrastructure tool right here. And I'm gonna make sure that switch is selected. That should be what's selected by default for you. And let's just say that we're gonna use some little 24 port switches in this environment. So we'll say that there are 24 ports and we'll say they have like 300 watts of PoE each, something like that. So there we go, we've got our switches ready to go. So now we can go ahead and drop one into our floor plan. So there's our switch right there. Uh, and notice that it's red right now. If we click on it, now notice that that changed to edit network infrastructure. So we're no longer adding, we're editing this one. Notice that we are 168 watts short on this switch. So uh, we do not have enough wattage uh, for this switch to support all these access points. Now there's also some cable runs here that are gonna be really long. So let's just place another switch. So we'll drop another one in this closet over here. And now we can see that we've got one switch here. It's got 105 watts left on it. This switch has 27 watts left on it. So it looks pretty good. Great, so now we've got switches in there. What about like desk phones and things like that? We can place some of those here as well. Uh, so we could say, yeah, let's go find our desk phones and let's just zoom in a little bit on some of our offices here and say, yeah, there's going to be uh, uh, there's going to be a phone in some of these uh, some of these rooms here, and of course those need some power over Ethernet as well. So you can see here that our switch now has something wrong. Let's go check it out. I'll click on the edit tool. We'll click on that switch, and we can see that yeah, it's 24 watts short here because of the phones that we just added. So let's go ahead and boost that up to a 48 port switch with a 600 watt power budget. And there we go. Now our switch is much happier. Okay, last thing that we'll take a look at before I let you go and turn you loose to try all this in Hamina on your own is let's take a look at the client view. So let's hide all of our network equipment really quickly. So we'll just hide all of that. So it's now all out of the way, but we'll leave our access points here so we can see where they are. So if we go to the client view, we can choose from a list of common client devices. Now what we've done is we have contacted the vendors for all of these clients and we have plugged in their exact roaming behaviors. How they decide to roam and who they'll decide to roam to is all programmed in here and, uh, and, and it's unique for each one of these clients. So for example, we could choose the iPhone 
And uh, then we can click and drag to move that client around on the network and we will make predictions for when we think the client is going to roam and who the client is going to roam to. This is great for making sure that your clients are going to have a good experience as they move around the network. It's great to make sure that they've got good signal strength and good data rates and that they don't uh, end up somewhere with bad 5 gigahertz coverage and end up having to roam over to 2.4 gigahertz coverage. There's a bunch of other things to explore in Hamina. You can use this for outdoor designs. Uh, you can create online reports that other people can view simply by clicking a link. You can share the project with other users. You can add notes. There's all kinds of different features in Hamina. If you want to learn more about it, then feel free to visit either our documentation or head over to our YouTube channel where we regularly post how-to videos, tutorials for specific things. Definitely go check that out. There's all kinds of information both there and on the knowledge base. So great. Well, thanks for checking out this quick start tutorial for Hamina. We hope you enjoyed it and we hope to see you in another Hamina tutorial video very soon. Talk to you soon. Bye now.